Hi, Ms. Hall here. Today's video is titled Victory and Defeat in the Greek World. We're going to talk about how, despite all of their cultural similarities, the Greek city-states were often very bitterly divided. Yet, when an outside threat, the Persians threatened them, the Greeks were able to put aside their differences and defend their freedom together. So today we're going to talk about their battles with the Persians, as well as their battles amongst themselves. Okay guys, by the end of this video, you should be able to explain the causes of the Persian Wars, understand the significance of the Battle of Marathon, understand the significance of the Battle of Salamis, explain the results of the Persian Wars, describe life in Athens during the Age of Pericles, and explain the causes and results of the Peloponnesian War. The first thing we're going to talk about are the Persian Wars. By about 500 BC, Athens was a wealthy city-state, but they, along with the rest of the Greeks, faced a threat from the Persians. The Persians um, controlled a large empire from Asia Minor all the way to the border of India, including many of the Greek city-states. And under King Darius I, the Persians um, controlled the city-states of Ionia and Asia Minor. And around 499 BC, those city-states decided to rebel against Persian control. And Athens helped them. They sent ships to help with the rebellion, which was the beginning of the trouble between the Greeks and the Persians. The Persians soon crushed that rebellion, but Darius was furious with Athens for playing a role in the uprising. And in time, he sent a huge force to punish them. At around 490 BC, the Persian troops landed near Marathon, which is just north of Athens. Um, and the Athenians asked for help from their neighboring city-states to defeat the Persians, but very few came to help them, so the Athenians were greatly outnumbered. They still, however, managed to force the Persians to retreat. Um, Themistocles, who was the Athenian leader at the time, however, knew that it really wasn't the end of the threat, and he urged the Athenians to build a fleet of warships and to continue to prepare their defenses. You might be wondering about um, the marathon race that we call a marathon today and what that has to do with this battle. The legend says that a messenger was sent from the city of Marathon to Athens to report their victory and that he ran the entire way and as soon as he burst into the assembly and announced we have won he collapsed and died. Darius actually died before he was able to attack Greece again, but in 480 BC, his son Xerxes sent a larger force to conquer Greece. Athens persuaded this time Sparta and the other city-states to join in the fight. Once again, the Persians landed in northern Greece, and the Greeks, led by the uh, great warrior King Leonidas of the Spartans, they made a very heroic stand, but they were eventually defeated. The Persians then marched to Athens, where they burnt the city to the ground. However, the Athenians had mostly withdrawn to safety, and the Greeks now put their faith into the ships that Themistocles had encouraged them to build. They lured the Persian navy into the Strait of Salamis, and the warships, which were powered by rowers, drove into the Persian boats with battering rams and managed to sink most of Xerxes' fleet. The following year, the Greeks again defeated the Persians on land in Asia Minor, which brought an end to the Persian invasions. This victory over the Persian had several results in the Greek world. One of them was an increased sense of Greek uniqueness. They firmly believed that their gods had protected them and their superior form of government from this outside threat. Athens, named for the goddess Athena that you see here, emerged as the most powerful city-state. And they organized the Delian League, which was an alliance with other Greek city-states. And they used their position from within the Delian League, and actually as the leaders of the Delian League, to create an Athenian empire. They used money create, contributed by the other city-states to rebuild Athens. And when other states raised complaints, they quickly squelched them using force. The time after the Persian Wars was a golden age for Athens, especially in the area of government. Under the statesman Pericles, the economy thrived and the government became more and more democratic. Periclean Athens was a direct democracy, which means that a large number of citizens take part in the daily affairs of the government, not just a select group of elected officials like in most democratic societies today. At least 6,000 members had to be present to decide important issues. 
Athens actually paid a stipend or a fixed salary to men who held office, which allowed for the poor to serve in government. The Athenians also served on juries or panels of citizens who have the authority to make the final judgments in a trial. An Athenian jury might include hundreds or even thousands of men. Any male citizen who was over 30 was able to serve on the jury for a year, and they were also paid a stipend. Athenian citizens could also vote to ostracize one of their members, which meant they sent them away to live outside the city, usually for a period of about 10 years. With the riches of the Athenian Empire, Pericles even hired the best architects and sculptors to help come and rebuild the Acropolis, which increased Athenians' prosperity and served to further remind the citizens and visitors that the gods had favored the Athenians. An educated foreign-born woman named Aspasia was also one of Pericles' helpers, and she helped turn Athens into a cultural center for Greece. Pericles and Aspasia surrounded themselves with thinkers, writers, and they organized building programs and public festivals to support the arts in Athens. The other city-states resented the power that Athens held, and to counter the Delian League, Sparta and other enemies formed the Peloponnesian League. The Peloponnesians supported oligarchy in contrast to the democracy of the Athenians. In about 431 BC, war broke out in earnest between Athens and Sparta and soon engulfed all of Greece. The Pel Peloponnesian War drug on for 27 years. Sparta, being inland, had an advantage over the easily reachable Greece. Sparta invaded, and Pericles allowed the people from the country to move inside the city walls of Athens for safety. In the end, this was a mistake, because overcrowding soon led to disease, and a terrible plague killed a third of the population, including Pericles himself. As the war drug on, each side committed savage acts against each other. Sparta, in the end, even allied with Persia. Finally, in about 404 BC, Sparta captured Athens with the help of the Persian navy, and they stripped the Athenians of their fleet and empire. However, they decided not to destroy the city of Athens itself. In light of corruption and selfish, selfish interests, the democratic government began to suffer. And although its spirit and vitality declined, Athens still remained one of the cultural centers of Greece. All right, now that you've learned a little bit about the fighting in the Greek War, both with the Persians and amongst the Greeks, there's a couple things you need to do. First, review what you've learned in this video. Make sure you understand it all and make sure you remember it for your quiz. Also, go back to your map activity that we completed last week and answer questions 4C and 4E on that activity. Based on this video, you should now have those answers.